Uh, so it's very expensive to be poor for, for a variety of reasons. The first part is that it robs you of time. Okay. Not that poor people are the richest people, <laughs> like in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> the first shall be last type of thing. Yeah, well, yeah. that's the goal that eh? we want to, in terms of those principles, particularly when it comes to humility, yes. yes, yes. Uh, but what we mean is that by poverty being expensive is that it robs you of disposable income, it robs you of your time, so you have to work a lot longer mm -hmm. for the same things that you and I can buy. Um, so if I'm making 100,000 and you're making 50,000, you have to work twice as much to buy the same product that I will buy by that particular value. So if I'm buying something that's 10,000, the price could be the same, but you worked twice as much for it. Some people worked three times as much for it. Others worked five times as much for it. Now, the problem with that is that Time is 24 hours regardless of whether you're rich or poor. So if you're working a lot longer for that, then it becomes expensive because what is money? It's just we convert it back to time and our earnings, the sweat of the brow. That's how we boil it down to it. Huh? That's why you're paid a salary for exchange of your time. And the salary that you're paid, you know, really dictates your purchasing power. So a higher salary, more purchasing power. A higher salary, less time that I have to work for something. So for a lot of people, you can say, you know, for someone like me, you can take the money that I make in a year, divide it by how much I pay in rent or mortgage, and say, oh, he's only working 0.5% of his time for that house. Someone else may be working 30, 40, 50, 60% of their time for the same house or even a lesser house. So that's what I meant by, you know, poverty being expensive, particularly not only to the individual, but also to the society, because now in the society you take all that aggregate of all those you know, losses in time, and it becomes very expensive for a country as a whole. So the, it's an economic loss because you can convert time to um, economic losses. So think of it as a poor person um, and how much you spend in transportation costs and also how much time you sit in transport largely, uh, because of you don't have other means of transportation, okay? That's your time as an individual. Somebody may be sitting two hours in traffic, okay? But you have a whole matatu of people sitting two hours in traffic. Assume that matatu has 30 people. That's 30 times two. That's 60 hours of loss time for country as a whole. Now, how many matatus do we have on Thicker Road? You start converting that and it becomes a burden to society and a burden to the country. Because if we were to invest, for example, in better infrastructure, better education systems, and otherwise we can save a lot of time that we lose in multiple different things. And time is of economic value, because now if I give you back two hours every day, what are you gonna do with that time? Spend it with your family, yes. Probably be more innovative because you have time to think, trial stuff. So it becomes a loss for the individual, but a loss for the society as a whole. So basically, uh, the true definition of wealth could be the uh, amount of money you make per unit time invested. Yes, that could be one definition. Huh? For me, I like to use it, for me on a personal aspect, I like to think of wealth as how much time it buys me in terms of freedom. Okay? How much time do I get to do the things that I enjoy mm -hmm. relative to, mm -hmm. to work? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not just talking about hobbies, driving cars, I'm talking about, you know, spending time with family, going to church, you know, investing in my mind, in reading and, 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 and stuff like that. You see, poverty is expensive because it's not just the time, but it's what you can do with that time. So there are people who do want to go to school, but they're just robbed of the time because they're poor. Okay. Because they can't pay for the school fees, which equates to time. Ah, yeah. ah. And how do you get to this place? Uh, of um, achieving purchasing power, achieving freedom. How do you get there? Because, uh, le let me just go directly. What's the practicality of saving? That's a good, good question. So the practicality of saving is, one, as we mentioned last time, it's an insurance policy against a rainy day, which will happen. You, know, you may fall sick, you may get hit by a car, an errant born a border who was on the phone may you know, come and sideswipe you. So there's that particular aspect. But beyond the accidents and the things you can't plan for, it allows you to reward yourself in things that you may find valuable to you. So one, there's the safety net of it for yourself in the future. There is not having to worry 
about whether or not you will put a roof over your head or put food on your table for yourself as an individual, perhaps for your family, if you have a family, for your kids, if you have kids. It gives you a lot of, um, uh, I wouldn't say happiness, but at least it reduces the amount of worry that you have because there are rich people who are not happy. So I wouldn't necessarily say that money equals happiness, but money buys you the capacity, I would say, for happiness because it reduces some of the pains that you may experience in life.